Let's stop by giving them a big clap, a round of applause for being here this morning. Very, very exciting. So I'm going to be talking about making career strides um, more than just a wish and a charge on making intentional efforts towards career growth. And I guess this is a topic that is important for everyone really, regardless of where you are in your career. If you look at the career paths of a lot of even people that look like they have it all figured out, you see that there's been a lot of like ups and downs, left and right. Many people, um, many people pivot into different things. So some of you here will be at various stages in your career, right? You might be trying to pivot, you might be just, you might be interested in tech, but you don't know what part of tech you're interested in, or you're just trying to figure stuff, stuff out. So hopefully there's something, I say something that's useful to everyone. But you know, if you think about careers, careers are interesting. So Elon Musk, you, I think most of us know Elon Musk, um, founder of Tesla, started his life writing video games. And now he apparently runs Twitter, for example, so a very far left. Ellen DeGeneres, for example, worked different jobs before starting her career in entertainment. Um, I'm a good example. I started doing, I studied chemical engineering and apparently now, no, not apparently, I'm now a co-founder of a finance company. So those are very, very, um, those are very different things. And you know, the, the whole point of this is, if you're unsure about you know, what to do next in your career, you're not alone. Most people are like that, even the people that have it all figured out. Um, so where are you on your journey is sort of the first question I'm gonna ask. My first assumption, if you're here, is that you want to work in tech, or you're interested in tech, or at least something tech adjacent, but maybe, maybe not. So there'll be two groups of people in this. There's group one, and group one is, I already know what career path I want to take. I'm just trying to figure out how to be intentional about it, but I already know I want to be front-end developer, I want to do this, 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 and I'm just trying to figure out how to be intentional about it. Then there's group two, Omo, I'm just interested in tech. I don't really know what I want to do, but they said that tech is where there's money. <laughs> and so me, I'm trying to find which one I'm in. So before I move forward, which of us are in group one? That we already know the career path we want to take, we're trying to figure out. Okay, look at us. And which of us are in group two? We're interested in tech, but we're not sure which part of tech we're interested in. Okay, that's interesting. So even less of us. That's interesting. That's, um, that's cool, okay. So we'll talk a little bit, we'll talk the second group of people through where they are first, and hopefully it'll be helpful for um, the second group of people, and then we'll go from there. Um, this is an old saying that says, choose a job you love, and you'll never have to work a day in your life. Um, I find this saying very interesting because Obviously, it doesn't mean you'll literally never have to work a day in your life. Excuse me. But it implies that when you love your work, it'll feel like a choice more than a burden. However, for me, the word love sounds, always just sounds dramatic. I, everything feels like work to me unless I'm actually not working. So I edit it a little bit and I say, choose a job you care about and the work you're doing will feel worth it. And I think that's important for all of us. Regardless of what you want to do in your journey, regardless of what is you know, interesting to you, regardless of what career you're working on, it's important for us to be working at doing things or doing something that, you know, that we care about to whatever degree. So when we're thinking about being intentional, I like to think about it as two levels. And level one, I guess, is finding the first level. So what do you enjoy doing is the first question I ask myself. First off, I'm going to start by saying sometimes it's okay to just enjoy things so you don't have to monetize everything you enjoy. You know, so if you like, I don't know, cooking, I'm not saying start a cooking app, or if you like doing no necessarily start like a fashion app. But generally thinking about what you enjoy is a good place to start. 
and if, you, if there are things you really, really enjoy that you think can be turned into a career, then those are, that's a good place to start. But if you're not sure, the second question is, what don't you enjoy doing? Because if you figure out what you don't enjoy doing, that can help you narrow the scope. So for example, like I mentioned, I studied chemical engineering in uni, and very quickly, within like the first six months of doing my degree, I knew I didn't want to be a chemical engineer. Like I started because I liked math and chemistry, but when they started teaching it, I knew this thing was not for me at all. But I also have Nigerian parents, so I was going to finish the degree because, you know, what was going to happen next. But that helped quickly cross out what I don't want to do. So I could spend time now trying various stuff. And if you try enough things, if you don't find what you like doing, quickly share, you'll find all the things you didn't like doing. So I got a job, I got an internship in insurance. I realized, okay, I don't like this either. Got an internship doing something else. I was like, ah, okay, this one isn't for me either. So that's really, really helpful. Then post-university, I was listening to a talk and someone said to me, or not someone, I, the, someone in the talk said, I actually don't remember what talk it was, I wish I could find it. But someone said, think about a problem that really bothers you and try and solve it. And so that's the next thing. What type of problems do you want to solve? Because fundamentally, if you solve a problem for a large enough number of people, then you add value. And that's sort of what we want to do. So even if you already know, you know what you want to do, it helps point you in the right direction for your career. Asking yourself, what type of problems do you want to solve? And what you're interested in? And what is important to you? helps narrow down your options. And, you know, fundamentally, read and learn about a wide variety of things. You know, so even if you're a software engineer, you're, you know, you work in various parts of tech, so if you work in customer services, if you work in design, if you work in legal, whatever part of it that you work in or you're interested in in tech, it's important to read and learn about a wide, wide, wide variety of things. So that, that also, because reading about things, sometimes I always say you don't know what you don't know, right? And so reading about things, learning about things, opens your mind out to things and helps you figure out, okay, hmm, this sounds interesting, this sounds interesting because you might not have been exposed to it. And finally, surround yourself with people who are driven and passionate and have similar goals and ambition because that helps you feed and learn of each, each other. Peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, peer-to-peer -peer networking is actually very, very, very important. Um, and one thing I always say generally with careers, if none of these things work, if you have no idea still how to be intentional, what to go about it, look for someone who you admire, whose life looks cool, it could be on the internet, it could be someone you just know because you follow their Twitter, someone you follow on Instagram and you just think, ah, they look fabulous, and read about their life and see how they worked towards it. And more often than not, you'll learn something again. Again, look at, um, you know, think about what's important to you. I keep saying that thing. So, you know, if money is your biggest money motivator, learn about top paying jobs and see which resonates the most with you. Set broad career and financial goals. And you know, that also helps you stay on the path of all these things. So let's see, we figured out, okay, first level, we know what we want to do, we have some idea, etc. But what's the next level? The next level, and I think this would then apply to most of us in this room, are we have a good idea of where we want to be. Right? We sort of, you know, we know what we're trying to do. It's important to look at where you are today and be very, very brutally honest with yourself. Where are you today? What are you good at? What have you learned? What are you not so good at? And then ask yourself really, really simply, where do you want to go? And what is the gap between where you are today and where you want to be tomorrow, in a year, in five years, whatever that is? And sometimes when you do this, it now seems scary. But fundamentally, break it up into small but manageable steps. Break these gaps in small but manageable steps. So for me, for example, it was, okay, I work chemical engineering, I work in power, um, but I like finance. So the first thing I started doing was I just did a course, was the first step. And then I tried to find a job, then I started doing CFA. Break the path between where you are today and where you want to go into small but manageable steps and then start doing the work, right? Who do you see, 
you know, and when you're thinking about where you want to go again, it's important to think about who you see or what do you see that inspires you. Be aspirational, try and learn as much as you can because again, learning helps. But yeah, get started is the most important thing. When you know where you are, when you know where you want to go, the most important thing to do is get started. If you don't remember anything else I've been saying, remember that you have to start. Because it's easy to get bogged down in planning, it's easy to get terrified, but just start. Do the first thing on your list and go from there. It doesn't even matter if you don't know what the second thing is. Just start today, okay? Um, and yeah, um, it, it, again, the first step doesn't have to be a big one. It can be as simple as taking your phone and following you know, 10 Twitter handles that inspire you or that tweet about stuff that you're interested in. It could be joining a community. It could be sending a message to someone. Just literally get started. And just some high level thoughts. Um, I don't know how, everyone is, how old everyone is, wherever you are, but work hard, really, really hard. Being intentional about your career is hard work. Sometimes you're going to have to do stuff that you don't enjoy on the path to getting where you want to go. So work hard and you know, work smart. Secondly, rest. Sleep is super important. It's hard to be intentional if you're not, like, if you're not resting. And you know, that's many things. It's sleeping, it's eating well, it's you know, taking some time off to like, regroup. Because you know, sometimes I'm like a big, 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 big proper, um, I tell people take rest, take time off. Taking time off helps you see the big picture. You know, I don't know if anyone has ever had to write a speech before or had to like do some like coursework or something. And that thing that happens where you're just in the detail for so long and then you take like a couple weeks or you take a couple hours off and you come back and it's like you're seeing it with new eyes. And it helps with every part of your life, including your career. Sometimes just taking a break can help you see the world a little better, think about something better, give you the courage to do something that felt harder before. And burning out is something we all want to avoid. So, you know, move around, be cautious, etc. Um, explore the world. I can't stretch this enough. If there's a second thing you take, apart from start today, from what I said, is that it's so important to learn. To, and learning can be through various things. You know, if you can afford to travel, if you can't afford to read about it, speak to people, network with people, talk to people, find out what people are doing, read about what they're doing, but fundamentally learn as much as you can because learning helps, you op helps open your mind, it helps move you in the right direction. And honestly, if you learn and you find something that you really like, last, last, you can copy what they are doing. And, <laughs> and that's a very, very intentional move. And finally, we focus so much on mentoring and trying to find like higher level people and be like, oh, hi, please, can you be my mentor? But I find that nothing has been more um, beneficial to my life than peer-to-peer -peer mentoring or peer-to-peer -peer networking staying friends with people with similar goals and similar ambitions so that you guys feed off each other, you encourage each other, you can be intentional about the same time, let each other know about opportunities, you know, at the same time, talk to each other and help each other grow. Um, those are the key things. So in terms of being intentional about your career, first one is, start, is so the first thing we've said is, Know where you are today, be brutally honest about your skills and like what you're doing, to know where you're going and what the gap looks like and what you need to do to bridge the gap, and then start. So break it down into little bits. Start ASAP, learn as much as you can, consistently learn, consistently read, consistently meet people and talk to people and learn. And you know, five, leverage the people around you and surround yourself with people who can also help you grow and you know, help you learn new things. So yeah, I think that is the summary. Uh, that's it. Um, does anyone have questions? I'm not sure how this works. Okay, so we have one question here. It says, the proportion of ladies investing in the financial space is low compared to men. Has there been any commitments by Bamboo to address this? Um, that's an interesting question, because we find that true um, in general. So Bamboo exists for everyone to invest. Um, the aim is that we can encourage more and more people to invest, and that we can encourage 
more women as well to invest in various in various things. I'm not sure what the overall question is the, in terms of commitment to addressing it. So we try and put out you know educational content. We try and be addressable. Most of our team is that at least does a lot of our. Um, most of our team is actually women, first of all, but then also most of our team that does a lot of our marketing stuff is women. And the overall hope is that if you see people like you talking about finance and talking about investing, you're also encouraged to invest, I guess, is overall. All right, thank you very much, Yamo. We have, okay, a couple more questions, <laughs> but I'm just going to take one more. What helps you stand out in your career at the moment? Hmm, for me, I love problem solving. So when, um, for me, that was the answer to my question of what do you enjoy doing? I like solving problems, and I like solving different problems at different times. So it helps for me and for where I am. So I work at Bampu. I'm co-founder and chief operating officer. And so that usually means, for me, at this point in my career, it means I do lead a lot of growth and expansion. And so because I love solving problems and because I'm really curious, it's probably my biggest, if I asked all the people that work with me, what do you enjoy most of working with Yamo is that you can probably call her at any point in time and talk her through your problems and she will help you and she will talk you through it. So I think that's probably it. And in most applicable way, I think it's being as useful to as many people as possible at, is probably the biggest thing for me. Okay, thanks everyone. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day.